I've been playing Pimp My 3D Printer with my Ender 3 V2 recently, and today I wanted to connect a Raspberry Pi and a webcam to it so I can set up OctoPrint and OctoLapse so I can get all those sweet, sweet time lapses of everything I decide to print. I just wanted to use the same board that I have connected to my other 3D printer, which is a Prussia i3 Mark III S Plus Shiny Edition. That board is Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, last gen, but it's working perfectly fine. I don't know if you looked at the prices of actual Raspberry Pis recently, but I went on Amazon just to search the same one that I had. They want $109 for this, a last gen board. The MSRP for this is $35. So absolutely not. I watched a video a while ago from Linus Tech Tips and he suggested some replacements for the Raspberry Pi. And in my case, it doesn't need to be that powerful because it's just going to be running Octoprint. And the one he suggested called Le Potato entertained me greatly. So I went ahead and searched Amazon for that one to see if they had it. And sure enough, they did. And it will be delivered later today between 2 and 6 p.m. Look at that. MSRP, $35. Selling for $35. Picked up a cheap webcam with that as well for a grand total of $62.83. Much less than the 109 whatever that Amazon wanted for an actual Raspberry Pi. Hoping it's get delivered later. We shall see. But in preparation for that, at least, I started printing a little mount for the webcam that should sit on the side of the Ender 3 V2. Pin to hold all of those in place. The Prussia is currently hard at work printing those things. Hopefully later today, I'll be able to mount this and set everything up and get it working. TBD. I'll be back later. I am back. I have some new toys. Le Potato. Webcam with an arm that will mount on my Ender 3 V2. And Wi-Fi adapter. We're going to be setting up Octoprint today, but there's a step before setting up Octoprint that we have to do with the Le Potato before we can get to that. Namely, we have to install Ubuntu. Found this guide from someone named Donny on the makersphere.com and he linked to the file which is also just on Libre Computer's site. There it is, the AML S905XCC, the hardware version we're dealing with here. I've already gone ahead and extracted that and we're going to put that onto an SD card. Hopefully we'll boot straight to Ubuntu. He used Windows in his guide but I'm on a Mac right now so I'm going to use Felina Etcher to flash the SD cards. One, go. Really? That only took a few minutes to complete, so now I'm going to attempt to boot to that image that I just flashed to it. I have all the keyboard and monitor stuff right here in front of me, so I'm going to take a second, set the stuff up, and see if it worked. I see it on my screen over here. That's not really exciting to share, so I'm going to go ahead and set up SSH on this really quick. So I can just do it from my terminal and record that. Donnie also linked to this guide here to set up the work adapter pretty much. Just use his instructions, connect to my Wi-Fi network, and then I'm probably going to just sign it an IP address for my router. So it always gets the same one. The server, after all, you should do that. I had to run a temporary Ethernet cable to my router, which is thankfully very close. Able to get all of the Wi-Fi working with the adapter that I bought from Amazon. Rather than try to capture this screen over here, I'm just going to try to SSH into it. Over here is the um, just my router. The one that says Le Potato is the one that I mapped the DHCP address to here. So it should always get this one. I didn't really change any of the default usernames. I just changed the password. Ta-da! We are into the potato. All right, we're on step two. We've got Ubuntu running. Now we're just going to get Octoprint up and running. Let's appear up here today. So another day, another costume change because I had to do some troubleshooting last night. And I diverged from Donnie's instructions a little bit here. He had owned this repository, this Octoprint deploy, and then ran this script, the Octoprint deploy.sh, kind of set everything up and get everything working for him. Took a look at the author of that repository, and he has another script called Octoprint install. The difference between the two is pretty much how many instances of Octoprint you want to run. But with the Octoprint deploy script that Donnie used, you can connect to your different 3D printers using just a single device. I didn't really want to do that. Like I mentioned before, I'm just going to be running this instance of Octoprint to connect to my Ender 3 V2. So in my case, the script that was better to use was this Octoprint install by the same person. This one is for a single instance of Octoprint. I ran the same commands as Donnie did. The only difference being instead of Octoprint deploy.sh, it's Octoprint install.sh. That worked pretty well. It took a while to set up just because the potato was not very powerful. And then after I was done with that, I was able to load up Octoprint and log into it successfully. After the Octoprint install script finishes running, it gives you the option to add 
a USB camera webcam to your setup so you can do the time lapses exactly how I wanted to do. So I went through that process. It prompts you to kind of plug in the webcam at a certain point. It did recognize my webcam, but that's where I kind of ran into problems. There's a page in the Octoprint settings under features it's called webcam and time lapse and there's some different urls that are populated here by default these were not working after i kind of ran the script and tried to add a camera using that function in the script and this took quite a bit of troubleshooting for me to figure out what was going on i eventually figured out that the script creates a service called cam octoprint that service was trying to look for a camera that had a different name than actually existed on the potato i was able to find the actual device name and just change it in the service startup parameters or whatever and after i did that i got it to work correctly in the octoprint settings then I changed two things. Under the time-lapse one where it says snapshot URL, this one only has to be accessible from the server itself. So you can use localhost to access the web camera. In my case, I set this up on port 8002. The script allows you to pick whatever port you wanted. That's just the one I picked there. And then you put action equals snapshot at the end of it. If you click test here, boom, that works. For the other one, the stream URL, since this is just going to embed the stream into a web page, the URL needs to be accessible from wherever you're trying to access it from. In my case, I'm on my MacBook right now and trying to talk to the potato. This is the IP address of the potato that I set up before. This is the same port as the snapshot. And then you do action equals stream. After I figured out this and fixed the service, everything worked as it should. And if you come back into here, I already did a little customization using Themify, one of the plugins that are available for Octoprint, renamed my printer to something cool. And I think that's it for now. That was my goal. Set up Octoprint, get Octolapse installed. I'll do some more configuration stuff in a different video, but for now, the potato seems to be working great.